so the fish value chain starts from the fry stage the fry is converted into monosex then the fingerling monosex is sold to the farmer who feeds this fish for eight months after the eight months the fish is now sold to the market then from the market to the consumer hello my name is lina velma i am an aquaculturist at aquarage limited aquarage limited we are using mobile technology um, to reach our small and medium-sized fish farmers we link them to quality fish feeds we link them to market and also quality fingerlings besides the app we do trainings technical assistance to all the farmers we train them on the best aquaculture practices and climate smart approach to farming so our hatchery has a total of 21 ponds as you can see this is one of our ponds which has our broodstock we are producing fingerlings so these are the females and male fish we are yet to start producing in the next three months our expectation is to produce 1 million fingerlings per month okay, generally in kenya as we speak we have over 50,000 farmers and out of these 50,000 farmers only 25 percent of them are women so what we are doing as a company to bring more women on board is we have rolled out a program called the aquaculture livelihood improvement program i live in short so in this program our focus is on, on women and youths who are currently not in the aquaculture sector so what our hatcheries the role our hatchery is playing right now is to provide the quality fingerlings that these women are going to use well most of our women have been on the trading sector of aquaculture they've been selling fish and they continue to sell this fish one of the challenges they face is uh, because of less fish stock in the lake the fishermen are getting less fish day by day so this means access to fish is difficult so this put our women in a very awkward position where they are forced to have sex to get fish back because of the affordability as well. The fish is less and there is no money. So as a company, we are empowering these women by um, bringing them on board into fish farming where they will be able to get tons of fish from their own farm. And because they do not have the ability to afford the fish cage, fish feeds and the fingerlings, Aquarage is providing the fish feeds, Aquarage is providing the fingerlings and also the technical capacity. Aquarage is providing the market for the fish. So that means we'll have to take all the fish and sell and give back. We also introduced them to the Aquarage app. Okay? So we are using our mobile application called the Aquarage Farmer app where these farmers will be able to access fish feeds, the quality fish feeds. They are also able to store their farm data here and the storage of farm data helps us to track the growth rate of the, of the fish and also the feeding conversion of the feed to see whether the feed is good or bad the climate smart approach that we're using we have an iot sensor which we've deployed to a number of farmers in various counties so this iot sensor is linked to our average app the iot sensors helps us to tell the farmer the amount of feed he's supposed to give per day so the work of the IoT sensor is to pick up the temperature of the water, which is very key in calculating the quantity of feed to be given. So the temperature of the water that is taken by the IoT sensor, then the number of fingerlings or fish that we took initially when onboarding the farmer, and the size of the fish, the three factors helps us to calculate the quantity of feed to be given per day. And this data is all in the Aquarate mobile app. Okay, so the number of women that we've engaged as a company, we have, first off, we've um, taught them how to use our Aquarage app. After the usage of the Aquarage app, we have also taken them through the, our series of training on the best aquaculture practices. So what I can say right now as we speak, the number of farmers, female farmers that we've engaged in the past two years, their productivity has gone up. Most of them, the ones who did not, I have a number around five who had feature phones, but right now have smartphones and are able to store their data. And these smartphones, they testify that it's from the profit they're making from their farms. So the women that we have on board are well equipped uh, with smartphones and are now able to work on the Aquarage Farmer app. And also there is no credit access for these women. So as a company, we are providing with credit we are also providing them with the fish cages and we are providing the fish feeds which are very expensive 
So the fact that we are giving them access to these, um, the production assets uh, is, is going to improve their lives because with the production, they are able to increase their income. We have fish, fresh fish from the lake, cage fish. When a customer walks in, I'll just tell the customer I sell air fried fish. So the customer needs to pay just 341. There are those customers who just want the fish the way it is, you just put just salt and oil. There are those who would like it to be spiced up, it depends with the preference of the customer. From this point, I'll have to record the details on the scale on my book. I have to have the hard copy, we also have the soft copy here on the laptop. It's connected to the finance department they are able to see whatever is being entered. Here in Kisumu, yeah. this is the only outlet that we have. But we have two in Nairobi, one in Lower Kabete, the, one, the other one is in Nyayo, in Bakasi. And then we also have an outlet in Kakamega. And then we have uh, Nakuru. I'm empowered. It's a source of livelihood. That is one. And uh, coming here, there's so much I've learned because I didn't know that if you want to store fish, to stay fresh in the fridge, you don't wash the gills. After you, you've removed the inside, you keep it like this. It will stay longer in the fridge. So that is something that I'm learning. I didn't know about it before. I can also start my own business if I want. So I'll just look for capital and I know how to go about it. It depends like how big do I want to start or how small do I want to start. I can take capital from my savings. I have to save. It is good at least to have some savings. Backup apart from uh, paying rent. I have needs too. Yeah, I have to take care of myself. By taking care of myself, I mean like uh, I have to look good. I take care of my kids too. I have five. I can buy food in the house. I can pay bills like water bill. I can buy power because nowadays we do tokens so I can pay for token. I am helping my partner. Uh, that way he's also happy because like now I'm bringing in something. I'm not just sitting there waiting for him to do everything. And that way I'm also empowered like now I have my own money. I can say somebody can not just like uh, walk over you because you have nothing. You know, if you have your own, you have your voice. I can speak up for myself because I am employed and I'm empowered. Yeah. <laughs> okay, before it was a bit hard. Personally, I've not, but uh, we see those things. Uh, they bring those documentaries on TV and we see what's happening out there. Sincerely speaking, they used to happen in our beaches because you had to like befriend one of the fishermen for you to get fish. That is something that Aquarit is trying to eliminate because now you don't need the fishermen. Now, like if I, I was selling even this type of fish, for me to get the supply of this fish, I have to befriend a fisherman. By doing so, there was HIV. It was on the rise. These fishermen, they took advantage of these women. The women are vulnerable. Now, I really want to sell fish, but the only way I can get the fish to sell is by sleeping with the fisherman. And this fisherman, it's not only me that is having a relationship with, because I'm not the only woman selling fish. You see, that is the way HIV went up. But now, since uh, we have acquired by providing farmers, uh, educating farmers and providing them with the fish feeds and empowering farmers, the, the farmers will get good harvest. And if you have a good harvest, you will want to sell it out. So you don't need to have a relationship with someone to get the fish. You just go buy the fish. They wait for you. You pay, you take your fish and you go. We used to have cases of uh, sexual harassment uh, being reported. Of course, they would arise out of uh, the physical contact uh, between men and women in negotiating prices. Uh, but with the, the use of the application systems I have mentioned, which help in marketing, sometimes you do, there's now doing of the marketing without physical contact. And to me, I don't know by how much percentage it has reduced, but at least it contributes to reducing uh, sexual harassment. Exploitation involves taking advantage and uh, of course now the fishermen will take advantage of the declining fish catches so the, uh, the fish is limited so there is a higher bargaining power in terms of that direction. As Aquarage, we, we have Aquarage fish farmers up and fish traders up. The traders up is where they buy. So when you have the app with you, you just go to the app and then like you want uh, 3, 3 mm. So you just click on to the 3 mm, you say the number of bags that you want and then you are told the amount that you are supposed to pay. And then you pay using M-Pesa. We also have USSB code. 
that uh, those farmers who don't have uh, iPhones or uh, Android Android phones, you can use the USSD yeah, to access the Accurate app. To start with, I can say that, the, uh, of course, the whole population in the East African community is uh, around 200 million, and this population is uh, growing steadily at a rate of uh, 3%. But uh, overall, in the fishing sector, we have uh, 200,000 in direct fishing and uh, about 700,000 in the value chain. And when you go to the women, uh, less than 1% of this population I have indicated are women in fishing, but uh, women play a big role in the uh, post-harvest handling of fish. That's what we call artisanal fish processing, where they form more than 60% across the entire uh, Lake Victoria Basin. Uh, of course, uh, you will note that women are the backbone within the fishing communities. They labor a lot to get fish to feed the children, uh, hence improving on uh, the nutrition of the people within fishing communities. Uh, they labor a lot through their earnings to pay fees for uh, the children. Some of these uh, uh, women within the fishing communities are single mothers. Hence, they contribute to education and improvement uh, of the population. And uh, you know they are the mothers with the little earnings they get, they are able to go to hospital, pay hospital bills. So overall, uh, they contribute to uh, reducing poverty in the fishing communities. They uh, look at the health of the children and the, the people within the fishing communities, hence contributing to the sustainable development goals. We have uh, gender programs within our organization. Uh, they range from uh, training and capacity building uh, of women. Uh, we target uh, women and youth that are involved in the artisanal fishing. And uh, every year we train uh, 40 to 50 women and youth across uh, the four partner states of uh, uh, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Burundi. Uh, in value addition, packaging, processing, marketing, so that they are able to get the best out of the fisheries. Uh, we also do some trainings to empower them to take advantage of the brew economy. You see the brew economy covers other sectors, uh, tourism, transport. So we teach them on how they can uh, relate fisheries and be able to benefit from up to the cross range of the brew economy. We've also helped them to form associations. Right now, in each of the partner states I've mentioned before, there are national women fisheries organizations. And these uh, women groups, we empower them to solicit for resources, make proposals, and they, they get funding. Like in Uganda, they have been able to establish a national women empowering center in Wakiso, through which they are training on either week or quarterly or weekly, depending on the need. And these associations have helped to enhance the capacity of the women entrepreneurs to benefit from the fisheries sector. We also help to give them some equipment to dry and process the products, to package the products, so that they take advantage of the existing value chain products. There are digital processes that we are mainstreaming in our day-to-day -day work. Um, to start with, we have an, an electronic catch assessment system where we are able to know how much fish is handled at a fish landing site by using mobile applications. The data is entered and we are able to get it at the center. Uh, we also do what we call frame survey to enumerate the number of boats, the, the number of fish handling infrastructure within the fishing communities, the number of artisanal women processors in the system, and uh, that information is also entered in electronically. Uh, we also have uh, electronic licensing system where the service provider
riders or the actors are able to quickly get licenses without going to the headquarters and uh, we are also trying to uh, integrate digital technologies to have climate smart farming or fishing so we have a scenario model we've developed to be able to uh, help us forecast uh, changes in the, the fishing environment and uh, also be able to provide early warning systems to our fishers who are always affected by environmental changes and uh, we have also had uh, some uh, fishers developing apps uh, which they use to do marketing and also to link the farmers the fishers uh, to other stakeholders and potential fish buyers yeah i can say we have women who have been empowered and uh, they have come up as entrepreneurs and those ones have been able to benefit from the sector take an example of karangara i think there is a very successful woman who has over 100 boats and is employing many people uh, then women who have gone into value addition for mukene silverfish they have been able to penetrate our prime markets in the uh, in supermarkets and also within the region fish goes to south sudan it goes to drc and uh, other other parts of the region. Uh, exports to Europe for currently is, my, is mainly for the Nile Patch and the, the women who are involved in the Nile Patch value chain are mainly in the regional market, not uh, accessing the prime markets. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, from the lake we harvest uh, uh, slightly over 1 million tons of fish annually, but as I indicated that uh, about 1% of the women are involved in fishing. So if you are to compute uh, say 1% of 10 million, you can see that the contribution of women in contributing to the amount of fish from the lake is minimal. Their major role is at post harvest handling of fish. We make exports to a tune of 300 million US dollars export outside the Lake Victoria region. But uh, it is estimated that the 840 uh, million US dollars is money that remains at the beach level as a result of the exporters buying the raw material. Our fish goes to US, it goes to Russia, it goes to China, it goes to Japan, Middle East, and, and Egypt, and many other countries. I wish to say that uh, women still have a big role to play in the fishing, but uh, they have challenges, and their challenges mainly they relate to financial. The land tenure system limits them from participating in the aquaculture, and uh, if those challenges could be handled, having some literacy programs within the, the communities to empower the women and you know they also have family responsibilities that really makes them stay at home but still that would be a good advantage for fish farming because if you are having fish in the ponds you need someone to attend to the farm in terms of feeding uh, checking on the fish so if there were programs that are gender sensitive can lead to promoting women involvement in fishing and also increase fish production Our job um, at Liquid uh, Intelligent Technologies is, is really um, laying down the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure um, for um, the digital transformation of Africa. So um, I would say that um, you know, we're aligned to a number of uh, SDGs. I mean, there definitely is a, an impact when I, when I um, you know, do travel around, um, you know, uh, we meet people who are who are digitally enabling their businesses and and that can be um, people who are using digital tools um, you know the, the, the social media um, the the other applications to boost their business you know we, we see a lot of this um, I'm calling it ke commerce um, rather than e-commerce which is which is people who are using um, a set of tools maybe they're using Instagram they're using whatsapp they're using Mpesa for payments they're using these digital, uh, digitally enabled platforms of, of, uh, of riders to, to do deliveries. So we see people are using this to boost their uh, catchment area for their businesses, sell online, sell online to all of Kenya and sell online to, to other countries as well. That's, that's one area. Um, uh, but um, there's, definitely, uh, there's definitely still a big gap. All the data is pointing to um, uh, a, a gender gap in in the uh, uptake of digital connectivity and 
um, and also the participation in the, in the digital economy. So a 2021 study um, uh, in Kenya around, it, it was a people-centric uh, look at the digital economy, um, you know, concluded that the female farmer in Kenya was the least likely person to be taking part in, in the digital economy. And, and I suspect that she doesn't have time. She's probably so busy doing things farming that she hasn't got time to, um, to, to, partic to, to participate, to be using these online tools. But, you know, we, we do see the gains um, but the data as well is pointing to uh, potentially bigger gaps in the gender divide in rural areas than there are in urban areas. And I point then to the, the 2019 census in Kenya. That asked a few questions. It asked everybody, are you an internet user? Um, are you, do you have a mobile phone? Do you have a laptop or tablet? And in the cities, Nairobi, Mombasa, Nakuru, you know, you saw um, maybe a 5% gap. You know, um, men were saying, answering yes to these questions, 5% uh, more than women. Once you get to rural areas, um, you know, the gap is widening. So it's more men saying, yes, they use the internet, they have devices. Um, now, uh, y you know, I do think we need to, um, to, to have some look at uh, the cost of connectivity, the cost of devices. Um, you know, I think this is a big factor um, in, uh, and it needs to be addressed to include you know, to, to widen this gap of digital inclusion. Uh, a UN study from last year, a uh, United Nations Broadband Commission study, uh, featured a case of um, a, a Kenyan entrepreneur who was selling her natural beauty products online. Um, and she was saying that uh, between 17 to 19% of her turnover uh, was spent on digital connectivity, digital tools to, to run her business. So it, it is a high proportion um, for, for people. So, you know, we see gains, uh, but the data is still pointing to very big gaps. Like our our job is is the connectivity side, but yeah. but I mean we working with uh, innovative startup companies um, who who are then looking to um, you know address some of these gaps, right? And we, we we also as well as providing connectivity cloud and other things, we've been you know partnering with um, it, startups, those that are working in the space of agriculture. Uh, Etc. Et you know, this is one of our focuses of Agritech. Um, one, uh, one, one, one case that she's doing quite well now is uh, is, is Aquaretch, which is a, a fishing uh, technology. Where they're going from strength to strength, um, and we've been um, helping them build um, IoT technology, um, which is then enabling some other digital technologies they're bringing to help fishermen uh, or fisher not fishermen but, but fish, uh, people doing fisheries um, in the lakes and ponds uh, uh, farming tilapia and other fish uh, and then this has very much been you know a lot of their focus has been around empowering women a lot of these um, th these people doing fishing um, fishing are, are, are women and they've had trouble with access to markets by using digital technology mobile apps that's helping them get them access to markets the technology we're bringing the IOT technology helping them to improve their yields. So these are the sorts of things um, that we're doing. We're, we're basically, you know, looking out for, um, for um, companies like this. Um, you know, they've had some good funding from GSMA grants. Basically, we, we've helped with designing the technology. So they're making uh, these probes that go in the water. Um, so we've helped with designing that and also manufacturing. Um, so these devices have been fully designed. It's, it's a physical electronic probe, it goes in the water, been fully designed and built in Kenya. So um, we, we're connecting them to uh, companies, technology companies that can do manufacturing. Uh, we provide the connectivity for this uh, and, and other forms of help. I think we've been partnering with them from the, from the very beginning, but um, you know, supporting when they've been having uh, funding rounds and uh, and grants, you know, supporting with um, those applications, you know, as well. I think um, by partnering with a big lane like us, it's it's been given them credibility uh, to what they're doing, which has helped them gain extra extra funding.